questions for the advisory working group. Uh, it's still possible uh, for delegations to make nominations uh, to the advisory working group. It should be done very soon, like maybe today. You may remember that in your invitation letter, uh, there was an appendix at the back that had a form. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was dated 26 September. And, uh, and there was a form in the back uh, that was a nomination form. And it would have the information for the name of the candidate. And then there was also a link to uh, providing a professional information uh, form uh, with additional information about the candidate. So um, it's still possible to make a nomination if, uh, if any delegations wish to do so. Uh, but it should be done very quickly. And the Secretariat staff can help um, with pointing you to the form if, uh, if you don't have one with you. Johannes, you want to? Yeah, I just have uh, um, two other things to, to uh, mention because it also created, I, are you hearing me in the cabins? Yeah. Ah. Oh, okay, Sorry. okay, no. Yeah, the <laughs> boss took my line. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Just two additional remarks. For those of you who have booked a lunch here, you should probably go to have lunch between 1 and 1.30 or so. You have a voucher and you can go into the hotel's restaurant. The others have to find their own lunches somewhere. There is a couple of places nearby. So, uh, But please um, try to be uh, back uh, close to the starting time at 2.30. That, that we um, want to make sure you don't get lost in, <laughs> in restoration. So, and the other thing is about the coffee that's not there. <clears throat> so we don't have defined coffee breaks for this session, which means the hotel cannot provide a real coffee service. Um, we have been thinking about this for a short while and then we decided, okay, it's three hour segment, so whomever needs to take a real coffee break in between can just go out into the hotel and grab yeah, into, the, into the lobby and grab coffee there. Um, and if we need to do a break because it will come with, I don't know, the demand to discuss some things or where we need to break for the purposes of the session, we will do the break whenever needed. But we did not want to, in the start, commit to fix coffee breaks because that would also interrupt uh, yeah, the flux of ideas and discussion that we have in this session. So there's no official coffee breaks other than you request one or Harry says, let's have a coffee break. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Johannes. Uh, what I would like to do now is uh, jump ahead because we're still going to be waiting on, uh, on credentials. Uh, I would like to jump ahead to, uh, to agenda item uh, 2.1, which is uh, on the, the schedule for this afternoon. But I'll just move that up to now. Um, it's the report of the president of the commission and if I could get that up on the screen. while we have a minute here while they're getting things squared away. Um, again, I would reiterate, if there are any questions at all uh, about what we were discussing this morning um, related to any of the organizational things, um, please feel free to, uh, to ask us. Uh, I know that a lot of it is, uh, is new, and in some cases it may be a little bit confusing, but we'll certainly do our best to try to, uh, to clarify things.
One other thing that I may uh, mention is, is if any, any delegation has uh, some material that they would like to, uh, to pass along to everyone else, um, if, if they presented that material to Maya, uh, she could put it up and, um, and, and make it available to other people as well. So uh, if there's any explanatory material you may have for some of the things that you've been doing in your own delegations that you'd like to share with others, uh, the Secretary of Staff can, can help make arrangements for reproducing that. Uh, uh, while they are charging the presentation uh, about the AWG uh, nominations, the one thing that we have to add, they can be done at any time until the decision is taken, but they have to be, there has to be the signature of the PR, the endorsement of the permanent representative. So we are going to print, because this was sent with the letter of invitation, we are going to print some copies of the, the letter. In the letter there is a link to a personal history form, you have, if you want to add new uh, candidates for the, for the advisory working group, you have to fill this and by electronic means you have to get your PR to your permanent representative to consent with the nomination, okay? Uh, OPACHE, Open Panel of CHY Expert, which is in the same form, it, it's a continuous process. You can do it also after the session. Is a, what is urgent, if you want to do it now, is to get the, the first line a nomination. And, and it should not be, normally should not be more than one person per country. You are not, we are not going to get two persons from the same country in the, in the committee. Actually, there are only seven positions open for, at this stage, I think we have 16 or 17 candidates. So, but we want to make sure there was a deadline of 30 November that was just to assist the selection committee having all the information, but according to the rules, you can still nominate uh, even here, okay? So in the break, I'm going to ask uh, to have some of this form printed and you can get them outside where the registration is. Okay, um, it's a typical part of our agenda to have a report by the president of what has gone on during the, uh, the previous intersessional period. For, for the commission this time, we have had an, an, an unusually eventful and, and productive four-year period. Uh, there have been many, many, many things that, uh, that have arisen that went way beyond uh, what the commission was anticipating when we began uh, four years ago. And, uh, and, and that has had a major impact on, uh, on many of our activities and it's had an impact on our advisory working group as well. There's been um, much greater CHY involvement in WMO priorities. In fact, when I first became president, um, one of the very first meetings I was called to was uh, an intercommission group on YGOS, and we hadn't even given any consideration to uh, to involvement in YGOS, and yet that uh, became a, a a seminal event for me as president of the commission. In, in terms of, 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 of what the commission, through me, ended up um, finding itself involved in. Um, and, and, it, and I have to say, on balance, uh, these things, although unexpected, turned out to be very positive for the commission. There's been a lot of, of good result from, from, from these interactions. And the House itself now has a much broader appreciation for the benefits uh, of engagement with the hydrology community. Many new opportunities have come up that have um, led to some improved capabilities. 
through this first meeting that I went to with uh, the intercommission group on WIGOS, uh, it was at that meeting where the first idea for the WMO hydrological observing system came about. And, uh, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. So it was completely unanticipated. And then there have been other things like the Global Hydrometry Support Facility. None of us had a clue that something like this might arise, and yet uh, the Swiss government came to us and, uh, and asked uh, as to our interest in the development of such a thing. And sure enough, uh, I ended up spending a month in Geneva working on a proposal uh, to the Swiss and it was accepted, it's been funded, and we had no imagination four years ago that something like this was, uh, was even possible. At the time, at session 14, we adopted five priority areas, you'll remember. There's, there's QMF hydrology, and that's been an issue that we've been dealing with for, uh, for, the, past several, um, for the past several commission sessions. Uh, it, it, it tends to deal more with our basic operations, and so it's really the, as we would say, nuts and bolts of, of what our communities do. Um, what was new at the last um, session was data operations and management, uh, and this was an area that um, there were a number of, uh, of services that were starting to explore some of these new technologies that were coming around. And you'll remember we had a, a resolution on WaterML 2.0. And um, so this was an area that's been particularly fruitful uh, over the last four years. Water resources assessment has been a component of what this commission has done for probably five or six consecutive intersessional periods. And in the past, we've had a number of documents prepared that provided guidance material for various aspects of water resources assessment. But this time, it was really imperative that we produce a manual on water resources assessment, which is something that the members have been asking for a very long time. I'm very pleased to be able to say at this point that, uh, in fact, we have a draft manual prepared, uh, and we expect it to be published in, uh, in 2017. Hydrological forecasting and prediction, again, uh, forecasting has always been a component of what uh, CHY has involved itself in. And uh, we've had two, two advisory working group members that have worked this issue. It is now dovetailing with a number of other issues that are taking place within uh, WMO, the, uh, the Global Data Processing and Forecasting System, for example, GDPFS. Um, things related to uh, disaster risk reduction. So we're finding ourselves with this issue now more and more looking at close linkages with the rest of the house, rather than just looking at the things that we ourselves from services standpoint uh, are concerned with. And then finally, uh, the whole arena of water climate and, and risk assessment, uh, which has, um, in some respects this time, we've tried to focus a little bit on uh, on extended streamflow prediction um, or seasonal streamflow prediction, if you will. But the member who's been involved in that has also found himself involved in a number of other issues as well. So again, the pressure on our advisory working group members has been, I would say it's fair to say it's been extreme over the last four years. I think I congratulate their services for giving them the time available. Uh, that's been required because they've worked over and above what was expected four years ago. What I want to do with the remainder of my report is focus on three uh, particular issues. Uh, the CHY response to Congress, to Executive Council, and my interactions with the presidents of technical commissions. Secondly, the, the rationale for the AWG recommendations that you're seeing in terms of the work plan for the next four-year period. And then finally, the CHRI response to emerging challenges. And, uh, and many of these are being driven by externalities to WMO, uh, but within the UN framework. First, let's focus on Congress and, uh, and Executive Council. Um, one of the major priority issues of, uh, of WMO, as expressed by Congress, has been the implementation of WIGOS and WIS, the WMO Integrated Global Observing System, 
and the WMO information system. And we've had two components of our, um, of our program that have supported those two activities. First is the QMF hydrology um, task, and um, we, wherein we essentially provide activities aimed at ensuring data quality. And um, as, as well as other things like regulatory material. Within that, though, and in the context of, of things that WIGOS has been particularly interested in, uh, has been a project to assess uh, the performance and the uncertainty of, of flow measurement uh, instruments and techniques. It's what we, ref we refer to as Project X. If you've ever spoken to Claudio, you'll hear him talking about Project X, and that's what that is. And that's been an unusually productive uh, project that's been running for a number of years now. Um, and we expect that it would continue into the future because it does provide real benefit to members, especially in terms of uh, intercomparisons that we attempt to do, looking at uh, different techniques and capabilities and tools, and, uh, and the people that have been involved in that activity from people who are on our Apache uh, have been uh, extremely talented and knowledgeable, and they've really provided good value for the commission. And secondly, there's been, under this uh, general topic, the production of, of guidance material and training. So we've supported uh, WIGOS and WIS through QMF hydrology. But increasingly, during this uh, past four-year period, uh, there's been an emphasis on um, what we do in data operations and management. And I mentioned at the uh, very first ICG WIGOS meeting that I attended, uh, it was interesting. The people who were there on that group kept referring to WICOS as the hydrological component of WIGOS. These words sound alike, so we have to differentiate them carefully. And I listened to them talking about the WICOS input. And I said to them, I said, you know, I've listened to you talk about this now for a day, and I said, I'm not sure that you really understand what WICOS does. I said, WICOS is a capacity building uh, aspect of our program. It's where we try to help services that are developing infrastructure uh, and build databases to be able to do so. But it is not in and of itself, despite how it sounds, it is not in and of itself um, a database. And Everyone just sat there around the table astounded. It's not a database. You don't get data from WICOS. I said, by and large, no. It's what we do to help services to build those things. And after the meeting, I went back uh, on my way home, and I thought, you know, there are a lot of services around the world that are producing databases. Um, and many of them even make them available online and for free. And uh, there's no reason why we can't respond to this uh, request from WIGOS, at least with the stuff that we already have publicly available. And so it was at that point, after I went home, spoke to a few other members of the advisory working group, spoke to people in the, in the secretariat, that uh, we proposed this notion of uh, the, WM, the WMO hydrological observing system, or what we refer to as Who's, and I'll talk more about who's during the week. You're going to hear a lot about that as we go forward this week. Another uh, another WMO priority is disaster risk reduction, and clearly this is an area that we have uh, a lot of capacity to uh, participate in, and our hydrological forecasting and prediction thematic area has been the one that's provided most of our engagement there. And uh, we've had under that, under that umbrella, we've had two meetings of our Flood Forecasting Initiative Advisory Group. Um, they developed uh, an implementation plan, a work plan. Um, at the second meeting, we, um, we actually whittled down because there was some concern that we couldn't handle all the things that potentially could be done. So, we focused on four tasks that we would emphasize going forward. Uh, projects that include best practices for flood forecasting, uh, 
guidance material that's uh, available to, uh, to the services and to donors as well as NGOs. Training materials uh, appropriate for end-to-end -end systems associated with flood forecasting. And then uh, finally, to ensure access to guidance material via the Integrated Flood Management Help Desk. And so these were things that we thought fit, uh, represented very well what we wanted in the context of disaster risk reduction. But also there was, um, within our water resources assessment, there's clearly information there that has uh, impact on what's trying to be achieved in the DRR arena. And um, as I mentioned earlier, there's the, the draft manual now uh, on water resources assessment that will be coming out in 2017. Uh, but another component of water resources assessment is something you're going to hear about later this week under document 4.3 the proposed global hydrological status uh, and outlook system. And as we go forward uh, over the next four years, I think this, this particular entity holds enormous potential uh, for how we can impact the DRR community. And uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about that, and I, and I hope you'll find it exciting as well. Global framework for climate services. I guess I could say fairly that in some respects uh, we refer to this as the 800-pound gorilla. Um, it is a dominant uh, element of, of what goes on in-house, uh, a lot of concern. Uh, it touches on all of the technical commissions. Uh, it, it impacts on much of what we're doing. It focuses on five pillars, capacity development, research modeling and prediction, observations and modeling, the climate services information system, and the user interface platform. It's significant, it's very significant that just about everything we do within the commission relates to some element of GFCS. And there is enormous pressure being applied to the commission through me, because when I go to meetings, this is what there I'm expected to, um, to contribute to uh, for us to be more and more engaged in these things. And so what I see as our significant involvement uh, in the GFCS, uh, it, it, at least in one or more of these pillars, has been um, the, the seasonal hydrological prediction work, who's certainly, uh, the, the GHSF, the new Global Hydrometry Support Facility, will have, I think, a major impact in this area. The Flood Forecasting Initiative, YCOS itself, the uh, uh, Associated Program on Flood Management, and the Integrated Drought Management Program. Just about everything of importance that we do has some relationship to what goes on within GFCS. I want to move on now to the second point uh, that I wanted to get across, which had to do with the rationale for the recommendations that AWG is making to uh, the Commission this time around for what our program of work might look like the next time. And um, by tradition, uh, we always have three meetings of the advisory working group during the four-year intersessional period. The third meeting, usually the first meeting, takes place very soon after the Commission meeting, and it's where all the new AWG members can get together. We develop the work plans that will govern what they do. And you have to remember, when we look at, a, at an AWG member, um, we're not just looking at a caretaker of a topical area. An AWG member is a project chief. In their terms of reference and when they develop their work plans, they're a project chief. They're running a project. They have the assistance of the Secretariat, but it is not the role of the Secretariat to do these jobs. It's the job of the AGG, AWG member. And so we put a lot of pressure on them uh, right from the beginning to treat their work assignments as though it was a project they had in their normal office. Um, there has been, and so, and that's the first meeting. The second meeting usually takes place about 15, 18 months later, and that's a status check. Uh, we spend a week where each member goes through their accomplishments against what their terms of reference specified, just to make sure that everyone's on track. If there's an issue, if there's a problem, 
What do we have to do to fix that problem? What additional resources can be mobilized to help them work through the process? And then finally, uh, usually about 10 months before the commission meeting, uh, we'll have our third advisory working group meeting. That's an important one because it's at that meeting where we'll start making plans for what we want to present to the commission as the program of work for the next four-year period. It's also important because at that meeting, in addition to the advisory working group members, we also invite the regional hydrological advisors to attend, and they're there for the entire week. They represent the unique interests of their regions, and so it's during that time when we have a real opportunity to get the full package of input that we need to prepare a, a program that, like the one we did for this meeting uh, for the uh, commission members to consider. When we got to the third meeting this year, I think, I think most AWG members were glad to be approaching the, the last few months of, of this intersessional period because they've had so much work on their plate. Um, there has truly been a large burden placed on AWG members to, uh, to represent CHY on teams and panels, many of which were created by the Executive Council. And four years ago, they didn't exist. They've come about within this last four-year period. And so the workload that the AWG members thought that they were going to have uh, at that first AWG meeting two months after the last commission session ended up exploding dramatically, and there were a lot more things on the plate. I have to say, I expect no reduction in the number of tasks like this that AWG members are going to face. I think we're living in a, in a time uh, when there's a lot of pressure being placed on WMO in its entirety, and to each of us in technical commissions, uh, that we're just going to have to deal with these things as they come along. So um, busy seems to be the mode uh, of operation. The third AWG meeting also discussed how we could be most effective in, in meeting these demands. And, um, and that included looking at the existing structure of, of CHY. I think most members agreed that the, um, that the structure that we currently have in place um, is generally effective, but it may be somewhat inefficient particularly in, uh, in the way we deal with thematic activities and how they're assigned um, to AWG members. In the past, when we have had um, an AWG member, they immediately would be assigned to a specific thematic area. In fact, they would be nominated to deal with a specific thematic area. And uh, that always wasn't, not always, was the most efficient way uh, to do business. And we also had problems with a lot of overlap within our Apache structure. You know, we had four separate Apaches. Um, there may have been a time in the pre-electronic days when that made sense. But nowadays, when we have, you know, modern interactive electronic systems, we only need one Apache. All the member names, can, all the experts can be listed in a single Apache, and we can search on expertise just by going in and typing it in. And all this is online, so it's a very efficient system. <coughs> the AWG recommended at this third meeting maintaining its current size, and, and the current size is seven members plus the vice president and the president. They felt that we didn't really need more people than that uh, to do the job, but that in fact maybe, uh, maybe it could be organized in a little bit different way. And then of course, as I just mentioned, they also recommended that we merge the four existing Apaches into a single unit. So the recommendation is that we maintain our current size, um, and, and, and particularly with the Apaches, it's important, in fact, it's increasingly critical that members update their Apache li lists on a regular basis. We've had, in many cases, um, well, when, 
when we were getting ready for this meeting, we were looking uh, at the number of Apache members. We had over 400 names. And in fact, um, there were many names on there that were no longer, um, no longer operative. People had retired. In some cases, people may have even passed away. Uh, we had names that had been on there for a long time. And so what we need to do is present a setup where it's much easier for Apache members to be uh, updated. Now bear in mind, Apache members also have to receive, they do have to receive the approval of the PR, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. So you do have to get PR approval for people that get nominated to the Apache. But anyone can be nominated to the Apache. If you have an expert in your country who may not necessarily be part of your service, you can still nominate that person for the Apache. It just requires uh, the signature of the PR, that's all. And so we've tried to streamline that process considerably to make it easy for everyone. This time around, uh, to, to fix some of the difficulties that we felt we had to deal with, uh, the AWG is proposing organizing its activities for the next period under three generic themes. And these themes look like this. There's a, a coordination and implementation support theme, which would be myself, the vice president, and one additional AWG member. And this allows us the wherewithal to deal with the various committees and working groups that we have to, to address, uh, our interaction with WIGOS and WIS, with the GFCS, with the GDPFS, with the regional associations. Uh, we would just have three bodies instead of two bodies available to do these things. And uh, so we felt that this might be a, a, an optimal way to proceed. It also makes it a little bit easier for me because if a request comes in to me for a certain thing, I would know that we have one person who's there to provide implementation support that I can turn to who's dedicated just to that task as opposed to someone who's dealing with a forecasting process or, uh, or, um, or a, a, a data management type activity. The second area that we're focusing on would be measurement, monitoring, and information systems. And again, we're talking about generic groups. This is, this is nominally what we may have called basic systems in the past. Um, but it focuses on those basic activities that we do within the commission related to observations. And we see the need for three members to be dedicated to that particular activity. And then the third generic uh, activity would be hydrological applications, products, and services. And again, this gets us more back into the, the flood forecasting kinds of issues uh, that, we, that we have to deal with. Um, in some ways, the relationship with some of these other commissions that we're working with right now on forecasting issues. So we see, we see the need for three members there as well. Now, the beauty of a system like this is when we, when the selection committee completes its process and designates who the advisory working group members are going to be, not all the time is there going to be a good alignment between what the skill mix of each of those members are plus what it is in terms of tasks that the commission is asking us to perform. In the past, that was a, a big problem because we had very specific thematic areas. If you had designated uh, as a thematic area QMF hydrology, and yet you had no one on the AWG who knew anything about that subject, um, it created problems. And so now by going generic, we can look at the three members, for example, who are measurement, monitoring, and information systems. And if we have something to do with QMF or with regulatory material, we can select among those three to devote their time to that activity. And if there's someone else who has more expertise in instrumentation, then we can take the person who does that and focus on instrumentation things. So it gives your advisory working group a lot more flexibility uh, in the way it assigns its work uh, activities. The other thing that came up, and I was hearing this from advisory working group members constantly, there was a strong recommendation from them to limit uh, the workload that was assigned to these three groups. 
it'd be better to not be too prescriptive in detailing a lot of tasks that we wanted them to do, but rather we gave them more generic kinds of activities because there is so much that's being put on their plate that their services aren't going to give them the time involved. It's one thing if you asked uh, a service to make an advisory working group member available and you're willing to give them one day every two weeks to devote to an assignment. It's uh, quite a different thing when that person finds that they need two days in any given week to do their AWG assignment. That's not going to work. And um, so we do feel that we'd like, in this particular regard, uh, we would use the statement, less is more. Um, we think it's more valuable that they do maybe fewer things for which they can do a better job in each one. But there's also two other things that we saw because at every, at every commission meeting, members come forward with a number of issues that they would like to see and we have to be able to accommodate that, of course. Um, and so what we see now is in addition to dedicating seven members to those top three items, there are activities that can be supported by the secretariat. And, um, and, and the secretariat could do these things with help from the Apaches. And this would be particularly true with, uh, with training kinds of things or educational kinds of things. Um, so capacity development, kinds of issues generically. And so I think um, that seemed to take care of a, a major component of uh, concerns that we had. The other item at the lower right is something that we referred to as CHY member activities. Many times at a commission meeting, at almost every commission meeting, we'll have a member, sometimes only one member, ask for something specific. They may ask for guidelines on how to do glacier mass balance or, you know, we, we've had all kinds of requests come in in the past. And they're all legitimate requests because these are things that services have to deal with. The problem is when the AWG gets together for its very first meeting, we look at everything that the commission asked for, and then we have to prioritize. And oftentimes, if one service came in and asked for something, it may not be ranked as high a priority as if something came in where four or five services asked for something. Uh, so we have to prioritize on the basis of the most impact that we're getting. Um, how are we affecting most of the services? This has, in the past, you know, it's led to the fact that if something's listed as a, a low priority, or we use a letter designation A, B, C, and D, if something is designated as D, it may not get done. It often doesn't get done. And so what we've proposed this time is, is a way to maybe satisfy that dilemma that we find ourselves in is to have some activities that if the member themselves were willing to take the lead on an activity, then we could help them um, through, through the Apaches, through the Secretariat, but it would be the responsibility of that member who's making the request to take the lead role, and we would just provide the, the support to them. I think this is a way to get past this problem where we just list these lower priority things each time and we never get to them, which is a very undesirable outcome. So um, from our standpoint, we think we can, at least it's worth a try to see if this helps us through this process. The third area is uh, something that um, is being referred to as emerging challenges. Um, the Congress, this time around put a lot of emphasis on these externalities that are driving so much of what we're doing. The WMO president, David Grimes, um, has placed this as a high priority for him. The new secretary general, Petri Talas, has been very clear in articulating his desire to, to pursue these, these new areas, and he's expecting commissions, um, and it's one of the reasons they're looking at um, at this whole structure of commissions. He's expecting the commissions to respond to these things consistent with their priorities as well. One of the things that 
some of these emerging issues that I think have an impact on us within the commission and things that I think we can come with a considerable amount of capability to, to help with uh, are the sustainable development goals that were articulated. There were 17 of them. Uh, one of them specifically dealt with the issue of ensuring access to clean water and sanitation. Now, although none of these uh, goals specifically focused on the need for enhanced monitoring or the strengthening of networks, most of these things implicitly require it. It has to be done. And so I feel one of my jobs is to ensure that I make it clear if they want us to address these things, which we can do, it has to be from the standpoint of strong networks. And in that context, um, one of the things that people are talking about now with respect to water is um, better integrated flood management or better integrated water management in, in a broader context. Um, well, you know what? You can't manage what you don't monitor. It's just that simple. And uh, National Hydrological Services are therefore essential in their nature to the water management process, even though it may not be something that most services themselves do as part of their mission areas. It's essential for the water management work to go on. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's something that we can work a lot on as we go forward. Another issue that's come up is groundwater. Groundwater has always been a part of what we do in uh, CHY, but it's always been a very, very, very small part. And the reason is most National Hydrological Services don't have a mission to do groundwater. There are some that do. My own service, for example, does groundwater. It does water quality uh, in addition to doing surface water. But usually groundwater is being done by geological institutes around the world as opposed to uh, the hydrological services. That said, one of the things that we could look at as an opportunity here is that uh, we may be wanting to look at how we forge relationship uh, with these other agencies um, that do monitor groundwater and how we can look at linkages that, uh, that strengthen the products that both of us come out with. And so that's something that will come up uh, during the week in some discussions. And regarding uh, GFCS and, uh, and these, this whole arena of climate-related water problems, it was interesting when, when three years ago when they were really pushing a lot of these, at, at the beginning they were developing an implementation plan for GFCS. I, I made the comment to G, David Grimes because he was saying, you know, we need water involved in this. And I'm saying, yes, of course you do. So why are you calling it the Global Framework on Climate Services? Why aren't you calling it the Global Framework on Hydroclimate Services? Because as far as I was concerned, you talk about climate, but there's only one issue associated with climate that really matters, and that's water. Because everything else is a derivative problem associated with the availability of water, whether it's agriculture, whether it's forestry, even in some of these urban issues, it's water. And David just laughed at me and said, yes, of course, but we're not changing the name. Um, because WMO has these three names now that it likes to have under the banner, weather, climate, and water, people were talking about weather services, climate services. And David Grimes said to me one day at breakfast, well, what would you guys like to do on water services? And I just looked at him and I said, David, do you know what water, if you talk to a hydrologist, do you know what they think of when you say water services? And he said, what? And I said, well, they think of the plumbing that provides water to your houses and takes the sanitation away and things like that. They look at it more from a... Uh, from a, from a plumbing standpoint, that's, that's the water services that you get in your municipalities. I said, we deal with hydrological services. Elena, who comes from a background in hydrology, immediately picked up on that. And so now it's very well understood within the context of uh, not just WMO, but GFCS, that our interest is in hydrological services. And I don't mean 
the organizations that do these things as a service. I mean the services we provide as organizations. And, um, and it's something that we are promoting. It's something I think we can do more of in the future. And we'll be looking at uh, the products and services that can, um, that can enhance what it is that we contribute to these uh, to, to this myriad of activities. Another thing that came out of Congress 17, uh, and there was a whole day when this was being discussed, was this issue of big data. And there are a lot of people on the planet who deal with big data. If you're Google, you deal with big data. Uh, if you're Apple, you deal with big data. Um, it is true that um, many MET services, of course, deal with big data. They run supercomputers. Um, and so the MET community was, was rightfully, I think, concerned about this. But it wasn't entirely a discussion that focused around the volume of data. You know, there was a clear sense that there were challenges that were associated with quality assurance and search and storage and all those kinds of issues. Um, and, 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 and of course, MET services, many MET services have a lot of experience with that. But another thing that was coming up was this notion of crowdsourced data. And all of a sudden, when the discussion started to focus on this, there was a realization this could incrementally increase the data volumes you know, in, in, in an astronomical way. Um, because you could have individual people going out on a picnic and pulling up their cell phone with a little app on it to get temperature and precip and relative humidity and all these other kinds of variables. And they could transmit this stuff in. Well, then, of course, that creates another whole level of concern and problems. Um, but there are many people now looking at this crowdsourced possibility. And so we're dealing with the non-traditional or the non-standard methods versus the standard methods. Now, unlike the MET community, a lot of us are trained engineers, and so we're very prescriptive about the way we treat data, and, uh, and it has served our community well because of that. My sense is that this is an area that we have to approach with caution. Um, we really need to understand more about the applications appropriate for crowdsourced kind of input um, versus those that do, in fact, require highly standardized uh, materials. Um, but I do think now with this new Global Hydrometry Support Facility, the GHSF Innovation Hub, we have an, uh, an unparalleled opportunity to begin to explore some of these uh, approaches that could solve a lot of problems for many services. For example, you could be working in, in a country in RA1. Um, you may not need stream gauge data but you may need uh, water level data for your irrigation systems. And in fact, there are some very low cost, very simple solutions that go beyond operating a traditional staff gauge, if you will, um, that can be deployed. And in fact, the Swiss are very interested in this because they've supported the development of some equipment as well, others, as, well as others around the world where they could take essentially a, a meter stick put it in the water, it has a head on it, you push a button on the head, and it automatically telemeters the stage that they're measuring at that location back to a centralized computer. Doesn't require a lot of sophisticated support systems or anything. It is not a replacement for our traditional methods and should never be considered that. But I think it's worthwhile looking for opportunities where we have very specialized interests and needs uh, to look at these types of tools so that we don't have to say, well, we need a stream gauge, but oh, we can't afford it, so we can't put it in. Well, maybe this is an alternative to that. Maybe this provides us with something. So it's something that we'd like the, the new innovation hub uh, to be able to explore for us. We have, I think, 
benefited mightily over the last four years from the fact that the former Secretary General, Michel Jarreau, was also for two years director of uh, UN Water. Four years? Yes. Two two-year terms? Yes. Yeah, yeah. A four-year total. And when Michel came into that role, he didn't really have much interest in hydrology. You know, it wasn't something that was on his radar screen. He was a Met guy, and that's okay, but water wasn't sort of a real family member. Uh, in fact, I think most of us always sort of felt that we were sort of the, the bastard children in the WMO family. And um, when Michelle came into the role of director of uh, UN Water, the person he turned to to help him navigate that arena was Claudio Caponi. And Claudio frequently went with him on missions to New York. And in the process of that, in the conversations they would have, Michelle developed a whole new appreciation for water and became not just somebody who you know, gave it lip service, he embraced it. And he sort of made it his own issue within WMO, within house. We benefited from that mightily because now I would say that we're, we're on the mainstream of all the other technical commissions in the organization. Uh, people look at us as a significant contributor. And Michelle's role in UN Water really facilitated that happening. And so I think what we need to do is uh, ensure, you know, the better wa management of water resources for whether it's for sustainable development or DRR or economic development through closer linkages with, uh, with UN Water. We should, we, we should look at how we can exploit that in helping them with some of the problems that they're dealing with. It works to the benefit of all the services in, in to do so. And also, WMO is, is, is seeking to become more efficient and effective in just about everything it's doing. Efficiency and effectiveness, whenever I go to a meeting with other presidents or with the executive council, this is all they talk about. Um, we've actually responded to that, and we've done it in several different ways. Um, we've, we've, length, we've shortened the length of our sessions. At our 2000 session in Abuja, we devoted 10 days. In uh, Geneva in 2004, we reduced it to nine. In 2008 and 2012, we dropped it to eight. And now we're dropping it to six. It's a big change from eight days to six days. And so that's affecting uh, why we're doing things, as Johannes explained earlier, the way we are. But um, we're clearly responding to the needs that WMO writ large has uh, put upon us. And I, uh, and I think it's being recognized. Of course, when you do that, um, you don't have the time available for discussion that you would like. And that has what's given rise to our pre-session discussion. I have to tell you, I had, I had hopes uh, when we embarked on this particular pre-session discussion this time around. But what has resulted has exceeded all my wildest expectations. It's really been gratifying to see the way members have, um, have embraced this and, and not just gone and read something and then made a nice comment, gee, this is nice. They actually had things to say. They say, we hear what you're saying. In our particular service, though, you need to be aware that this is critical to us. And uh, that's exactly the kind of input that we would have expected at a commission session from the floor. And now we're able to get it on the pre-session discussion. In fact, you know, we have a, a live stream going now. Maybe it's possible at the next commission meeting that there would be not just live streaming, but an interactive live stream where people could, if they couldn't make it to uh, the venue, they could still be credentialed and participate um, via video streaming. And, uh, and that's something that I know Congress and Executive Council in particular are actually looking at um, to solve some of their problems as well. So those are some things um, to consider. As I said in my report in the written comments, the third time's a charm. This was the third time we tried a pre-session discussion. And, um, and this time around, I think by every measure, it's, uh, it, it, has, it has succeeded. And it, it, rest assured, this is something that we will now go back to executive council with uh, and, and make them understand what it was that we found this time that worked and why it worked. 
They tried it this year at Executive Council, and they got one response in their pre-session discussion. Uh, I think now we have some insights on how you can make it happen. It puts a big burden on the Secretariat, and it puts an even bigger burden on the advisory working group because they're the ones who prepare these documents beforehand. So it is a lot of work. And then after you've done all that work, you still have to go out to your regional groups, to your national focal points, and remind them, look at this. This is your opportunity to weigh in on this issue. Do so. And this time they responded very well. But it required a constant, as we say in English, nagging to get them to, uh, to, to, to actually do it. But it worked. I think that's all I want to say at this point. Uh, I'm happy to entertain uh, any questions that, that you may have uh, regarding the contents of this. Um, like I say, this has been an unusually busy four-year period, but I think the commission has really come out of this looking uh, very strong and, uh, and very positive in the context of what WMO is trying to achieve. Thanks very much. Yeah, so if uh, anyone wants to, uh, to raise a question, uh, take your card and stand it upright like that, and then we'll be able to recognize you. Japan. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Very excellent, uh, the, your leadership, uh, and also the advisory groups, uh, the excellent contribution to the four, uh, four years, uh, uh, the very well organized uh, tasks. Thank you. Uh, as you introduced the, I, I want to make a comment on uh, two points. One is the you emphasize the SDG contribution to SDG uh, as a, one of the emer, uh, emerging uh, the challenges, and you refer to the uh, the we need to ensure the access to the clean water and sanitation. Uh, this is uh, uh, the goal six. But uh, as you may know, the uh, water-related issue is defined uh, defined in other goals, the poverty goal one, and hunger goal two, and uh, uh, the goal 11, the uh, urban settlement, and of course, the goal 13, the climate. So I think the, the, this, uh, our, our water role, water or hydrological role in uh, uh, the, as a uh, the cross-cutting or overarching uh, in, uh, role in uh, uh, several goals should be uh, uh, identified. So this is the first point. And the second point, <coughs> uh, you refer the big data. Yes, I fully agree with uh, this issue. Um, uh, the, and you also refer to the crowdsourcing. And uh, with regard to the, the data community, or data science and technology community, we identify four challenges. As you mentioned, volume. This is undoubtedly very big, very big issue. In addition to the volume, uh, variety, and the velocity, and uh, the uh, velocity. So with regard to the, the uh, crowdsourcing, the citizen science, the, we need to uh, keep the, the uh, variety, uh, keep the, we need to address the variety and the velocity. And uh, we have a very high throughput data from radar and through, from the uh, satellite. So we need to also address to the velocity. So 4V. Volume, velocity, velocity, variety. This is one of the framework for the big data. Thank you. Thank you for that. Excellent points. Very excellent points. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think with respect to the sustainable de development goals, I emphasized the one, um, but I, I, sh I should have been more clear in articulating that many of them did, do have water embedded with them. Uh, again, though, I think what's important for us is if they're going to do any of those things, it all boils down to observations. You know, you, you, need, to have, um, you need to have networks that, that provide the information that, um, that's going to underpin working towards solutions. 
And, and so I think that's something that, that, that we do bring to bear every day. But we need to be more vocal about how we do it, I think. And certainly with respect to uh, the crowdsourcing issue, your, your four Vs are, are, are an excellent uh, characterization. So I thank you for that. Uganda, please. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your presentation, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Engineer Nebatu I'm from Uganda. Uh, my question is related to one of your adopted priorities, that is the qual uh, quality management framework. Uh, we feel this is, of course, uh, very key because uh, that's where we collect the basic, the, the basic data. Uh, my question really is, uh, has the Commission, uh, or even WMO, has it played any role in the regulation of the equipment vendors? Uh, this is the equipment we use for, for data capture. Uh, because the two real are related. If you're talking about QM, QMF, then certainly you cannot divorce yourself of the, of the equipment vendors. I want to know the role uh, in, in a regulation. Thank you. Thank you for that. A good question. Um, I'm going to turn to you in a second, JF. But um, we do. Uh, it's uh, it, in many, many regards we engage that community because you're right. It is uh, it is essential, uh, and and it's recognized. Um, oftentimes we're very proactive in going out. Oftentimes others who are part of that community come to us as well. Uh, but what, what I'd like to do is maybe ask um, our AWG, current AWG member, Jean-Francois Cantine, who's responsible for QMF Hydrology, if he might want to respond to that. JF? Um, I do not have a, an elaborate uh, answer. What I can say, though, is that the um, representant from the industry uh, participates uh, in the Project X on the... Um, on the uh, instrumentation um, uh, assessment of the performance of the instrumentation. So the, the industry, so to speak, is monitoring what the, the CHY is doing along those lines. And that's, uh, uh, that's, that, that's at, at least a basic link, linkage we, we have with the industry. But uh, how it translates into reality that I don't, I cannot uh, answer that further. Sorry about that. That's okay. That, that's helpful anyhow, JF. Thank you. The other thing is, too, with respect to this item that we're talking about, the Global Hydrometry Support Facility, um, the Innovation Hub will, in particular, be strongly and closely linked with, uh, with that industry. Um, not solely. I mean, some of these developments could come out of academia, for example, or from relationships between the um, instrument community itself and academia. So um, I think there's going to be an even expanding uh, linkage, if you will, uh, through this new global hydrometry support facility uh, just for that particular kind of problem. Thank you. Just to complement what Jean-Francois uh, said, if, if this item that you raised, the number, it's going to be discussed under uh, document 411, uh, the quality management framework hydrology. And especially if you see the text, there is the last part, which the project that familiarly we call Project X because the title is very long, project on the assessment of the performance of flow measurement and techniques. The steering committee, which has been led by Jean-Francois, has been discussing precisely how to address your point. And if you read those paragraphs from 418 to 4114, 4118 to 41114, the Commission is going to discuss what should be the priorities for the next four years. So there is where your proposal can be made explicit. And thanks.
Are there any more questions for me? Ah, Comoros. Merci, Monsieur le Président, de m'avoir passé la parole. Donc, je vous félicite de cet exposé qui nous a ému sur les différents programmes de l'hydrologie. Donc, comme vous le savez, les Comores, le service hydro sont ouverts dans les années 89. La météo existait, mais le service hydrométéorologie a été ouvert dans les années 89. Donc, euh, donc, je suis le chef de service de cette euh, vie que je suis un homme du domaine. Donc, euh, la première chose, on avait demandé à l'heure même de nous envoyer un émissaire pour faire un état des lieux sur euh, la partie hydrologie au Congo. Et en 2005, on a reçu un certain Daniel Sengobnou pour faire un état des lieux du, de l'hydrologie, dont il a fait le rapport, dont il a, il a représenté euh, au domaine de l'eau même. Donc, euh, comme vous l'avez dit sur le projet Ouigos, qui donc on, euh, renforçait les infrastructures pour euh, le suivi d'avoir des données efficaces, donc nous, euh, comment, donc, comment avant on, on nous avait possédé 50 cours d'eau qui étaient permanents, et actuellement on est à 10, ils sont réduits jusqu'à 10, 10 cours d'eau qui sont permanents. Donc euh, la question euh, que nous euh, voulons, parce qu'avec euh, le fonds vert, donc, euh, nous avons euh, mis un projet pour pouvoir euh, nous appuyer sur des matériaux pour euh, suivre justement ces, ces cours d'eau qui sont en train de s'assécher et de savoir justement les, euh, les régimes de ces, de ces, de ces cours d'eau. Donc euh, nous nous aimerons bien, d'ailleurs j'avais préparer des, des petites cartes pour vous montrer euh, les différentes euh, cours d'eau et les zones où nous voulons installer ces, ces instruments si, si notre projet a été accepté par euh, le Front Vert. Donc, euh, nous aimerons bien que... Euh, D'ailleurs, on a un euh, le même nous, euh, nous, d'ici euh, février, nous ont promis de nous envoyer encore des, des experts pour pouvoir faire de, de, de comment dirais-je de simulation sur un certain cours d'eau comme l'avait choisi dans les en juin et puis après nous voulons que justement le même nous appuie sur parce que comme vous le savez nous les petites îles nous sommes les plus vulnérables sur la montée des eaux et la variabilité du climat avec la diminution des précipitations. Donc, si le même nous, nous occupe, nous, nous appuie, donc le service aura, d'ici l'année prochaine, de, euh, à quoi répondre aux besoins de, de l'humanité. Merci. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your intervention. And uh, as far as I can follow our email traffic, Daniel Shigomno from the Secretariat is just interacting with, you, uh, with your service on that. We are happy to help you. We got the request. And, um, but this is a bilateral topic that is between your service and our capabilities to support you in what you are doing based on your local situation. So, the commission meeting here is more about what would that mean in terms of the bigger picture of a water, of a global water assessment or of uh, the methodology or an end-to-end -end system or the value chain that you get from the data point to the water use. So, the, so um, my answer to your question is yes, we are, we are about to help you. We are only a couple of people that can do those things with all the different member states. We will do as much as we can. But also bear in mind that um, this commission is to discuss the big lines and not the bilateral things. So this is a meeting where it is multilateral. So, but this is not a critique, it's just a... Okay, unless there's a, a really burning remaining question, I think we should uh, we should move on. I uh, I think at this point we can uh, 
break for lunch, but the Secretariat has some uh, important information to, to pass along that follows up on some of the things we've talked about this morning. Uh, Natalie, can you ask them to put the, the website? Well, while they put the website on, for those of you have, that have uh, booked lunch in the hotel, I have been told that they, you should go, it's going to be in the lobby, in the restaurant in the lobby, not in the, you know, the brasserie, I think it's called, uh, at the, so at level zero, and they are expecting you about 1.15, around 1.15, and as much as possible, you don't have to go all as a group, but if you could go around that time, not all over, it would help if you go around all, more or less around that time, okay? I am not sure, and I don't know if there is somebody from the organi local organizer, if people that have not booked want to, to go, I, there must be a solution, but I don't know which one is it. So we can, if, if we see, if I see her coming back, unless you try. But those of you that have booked, there are several of you, please, 115, and there is going to be in the brasserie. Now, the second thing is, if we get the, uh, we responded to your request this morning, what, what the president was saying about nomination for the working group, advisory working group. Suspense, we are going to have it sooner or later, meanwhile, uh, here. So if you go scroll down the page, there. You see, what we did is put online the letter that was sent to all the permanent representative with copy of the hydrological advisor in all the languages that in which it was sent. If you can open the one in English so that I can show you something. Okay, this is the letter that was sent on, uh, if you scroll down, there is an explanation. We left the letter because that explains what the advisory working group, what is the structure, etc. But the, the important thing that has to be filled is this form, Annex 2. This Annex 2, and this line in particular, because is the, Annex 2 is divided in two parts. Part A is for the expert proposed for the advisory working group. You see there is only one row, because we are in, encouraging to have only one candidate per country. The lower part is for the OPACHE, and there are several rows, because you can have many OPACHE members. As we said, OPACHE, you can do it, it's a continuous process. You can, OPACHE means open panel of CHY experts, and this you can update anytime. So let's not concentrate during this session, let's concentrate on if you want to get more uh, nomination for advisory working group on the first line. And if you go to the next page, you will see, next page, there, you will see that is signed by the permanent representative, and at the same time, there is the concurrence of the permanent representative. He agrees because there is a rule that says that every, at least for the time being, every expert that works for a commission, for a constituent body, has to have the concurrence of the permanent representative. And by signing this letter, he says, I agree with that. This is something, it may seem bureaucracy, but it saves the almost one year of work of getting the nominee as it was done in the past. So it's very important that it's signed by the PR. So what we suggest, those of you, those delegations, that after understanding and or after listening to all the explanation, things that you have a good expert to participate in the advisory working group, what we suggest, you download the letter in the language you want, you send it to your PR, if, uh, if you are not the PR here, uh, per PR meaning permanent representative, suggesting uh, the expert. We would like you to nominate uh, Mr. Uh, whatever, Bill Smith, okay? Uh, please send, uh, the, uh, uh, fill, it, fill it and please sign it if you agree, sign it and send it as far as possible, as, as soon as possible. We think it should be before um, Friday. It, it, it's going to be open until it's discussed, but the sooner the better. And uh, you will see that there is a link. Don't, don't close the link, please. There is a link there at the bottom of the line. And that you can do from here. If you do that, click on that link. That link brings on this page where you, there is a form 
click on the form, sorry, there, two, num there. The professional information form is the same for Apache members or for advisory working group. And this, we request that you fill electronically. I'm doing something wrong here, because if Natalie comes, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. No? No, no it is. Ah, it's also, it's also, sorry. There is a link also in the, you don't need to do all this, the professional, the professional information form is also on the, on the main page of the CHY session, okay? So to have the nomination complete, you have to have the letter same PR and the, the expert must fill this form, uh, okay? The better he fills the form, the more the selection committee will have a good idea of what the capabilities of the person is, so it's, it's in your interest. I have been told that you might have to refresh this page. If you have gone through to this page, it might not appear if you don't refresh. So, okay? Is it clear? Unfortunately, one of the person that was asking is not in the room now. But <laughs> I will explain to her. So now is the moment to divide in groups. So don't, you think you are done? You are not done. This is where the fun starts. So uh, I don't remember anymore what I said. Where is it? Yes, it's true. I talk too much. Who, who stole my <laughs> my document? One and six systems. Okay, I by memory. Uh, one and six should go uh, to three a um, to minus two. One with Tommaso and six with Dominic. Where well, Dominic is there? So I suggest that you. They are at the bottom. Dominic. The difference is one has much more hair than the other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't making any match. Dominique for region six. So all region six is Europe. All, all, uh, all delegates of region six, please gather with uh, Dominique and go to minus two. And region one, please with Tommaso also to minus two, one floor down. Here, region three, South America and uh, Pacific uh, uh, Region 5, please stay here with me. You are the lucky ones. And, and Region 2 and 4 here on this side with, uh, um, with whom? With Paul, with Paul Pilon here, 2 and 4 here. If we, we can do this very fast and so that we, you have time for lunch. We reconvene at 2.30, okay? So please. Look for your secretariat staff and have a nice lunch. <laughs>